Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and if you haven't already seen our video on the 6800 XT, I definitely go and kind of invite you to go and watch that first. But this video is all about smart access memory and making the performance on this card even greater. Let's do this. Are you finding yourself building and repairing PCs all the time? Yes. Are you always misplacing your Swiss Army knife that hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver on it? All of the time! Well, you're in luck. The eTechnics PC Maintenance Toolkit is here, and it has everything you need to build and repair PCs. It even has an Allen wrench for custom loop fittings. Yes, it actually does have a use. Head over to the eTechnics store to find out more in the link in the description below. Tweezers sold separately. So if you have watched our other video, which solely focuses on the performance of the 6800 XT, then you will know how it performs in comparison to Nvidia. If you haven't, definitely go and watch that one because spoiler alert, in the latest titles, it absolutely obliterates Nvidia. So I'm not smiling because I'm an AMD fanboy, I'm smiling because it's competition and that is a very, very good thing to have in the market. But we all know that with the launch of the fourth generation Ryzen processors or the 5000 series, we saw huge performance gains, especially when it came to gaming, that took the level of performance on your graphics card, FPS wise, up to the same level as if you were running an Intel system. Sometimes in some cases, even better and beyond that. So we wanted to test this card on the 3900X base system like we always do, compare it against the 5900X base system, and then head on over into the BIOS, enable two settings which enables smart access memory. And I hear you ask, what is smart access memory, Andy? What is it all about? Well, you do have to remember, every GPU has VRAM. This particular one has 16 gig of the stuff. And it can only access that memory so fast. So what could AMD do to kind of, you know, make that even better? Well, thanks to the kind of extra bandwidth that you do get across PCI Express 4.0, it's able to access that memory so much quicker on the fly that it doesn't have to wait, which consequently, if it was waiting, your frame rates would suffer. So therefore, in theory, the results that you would see would be even better performance gains in terms of your frames per second. So of course we tested that and we compared it against the 3900X base system, the 5900X base system, then with smart access memory controlled, and we threw one of the highest N3080s in there for good measure, the Strix OC, just to sort of see how that compared. So let's run them glorious benchmarks.
there you have it. Um, I mean, straight away, moving from the 3900X base system to the 5900X base system saw huge gains. Then when we access kind of the smart access memory, uh, it just completely just, yeah. I mean, the results speak for themselves. I have no words. I mean, we ended up getting a score, a graphic score in Firestrike of over 50,000 for, for, yeah. Poof, I'm completely blown away by that kind of performance. We did notice, however, that ray tracing performance wasn't really impacted. It pretty much stayed the same. So maybe that's something that's going to come later as ray tracing kind of develops. Again, referring back to our normal review of this, Nvidia still have the upper hand when it comes to ray tracing, but they have had longer with the technology. So there's, I don't know, kind of that to think about as well. So when it comes to the raw performance, as we saw, Nvidia still kind of dominate because the 3080 did go up in performance as well, moving over to the 5900X based system. So in older titles, Nvidia dominate. In the newer titles, the 6800 XT dominates and just takes that lead and stretches it even further. So it's gonna be interesting to see kind of, you know, what happens in terms of future driver updates, the way that AMD and Nvidia are both working with game developers to try and get the very best performance results. And I think it's a very, very interesting time to be alive and be involved in this segment of the market. You do also have to remember that Nvidia have already announced that they will have their own version of smart access memory, which will work on both AMD and Intel based systems. But to be fair, I don't think there's anything stopping AMD opening up this technology for Intel based systems as well. I get it though, they kind of wanna, you know, have you on the AMD platform first, but as time goes on, there's nothing stopping them moving that over to Intel as well. And, you know, just sharing the, the pie a little bit. Either way, it's very, very exciting times. And it just goes to show that, you know, new technology is being developed and things are, I don't know, progressing quite nicely. Especially if you are in the market for a new GPU, there's so much choice now. If you're playing one of them latest titles, like I mentioned, I think this might actually be the card for you. And it goes to show that, yeah, AMD haven't flopped this time. They haven't done a HBM. They haven't done a Radeon 7. They've actually brought out something that is great as a standalone product. As soon as you enable something like smart access memory, well, that's just a completely different story. And like I mentioned, if you haven't seen our fully fledged review of this, go and check it out. There's a written review with tons more results on etechnics.com. And then there's our video of it as well. It's just mind blowing. It really, really is. So there you go, have it. Um, I'm kind of lost for words now, so I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.